All right, on today's episode of Python Poppy, we're back inside our TensorFlow course, and we're still doing our Malaria CovNet module. Let's have a look at what we went over today. Now, yesterday, if you recall, we were trying to figure out exactly how, by using the input and filter, we were getting this output here. And I couldn't figure it out, so I did move a little bit further, or I didn't move further. I actually continued taking notes and continued the course, and the instructor actually uh, gave us an answer as to how we got the input by using the input, or how we got the output by using the input and the filter. But before we actually got to it in the module, I actually figured it out myself a much simpler way. Now I can't understand exactly why they try to complicate ABC so much, but I guess I, I can't come up with an explanation. But let me give you the uh, solution that the instructor showed us. So to get the output by using the input and the filter, this is the formula we would use here. So this is supposed to be equals, not plus. So we have the width output equals the width input. Take away the filter plus one. So let me go back up here to our original grid. So we have our input here for filter size of three, output size of two. So with that formula, we would have four, take away three, which would give us one, plus one, which would give us two. Now that works perfectly fine. But like I said, I don't understand why they try to complicate things so much. I actually came up with the formula before I even got to it in the course on my own, and it was much more simpler. I, I actually blocked it out here so I can uh, show you guys what I came up with. So I noted that the count... To, no, hold on, that's not it there. Yeah, that was it. Okay, hold on. Okay, so the kernel filter produces the output by the amount of times it can slide from one full end of the input to the other. And the same for the top to the bottom. And the count is one starting at the kernel filter starting location. So let me show you this. Much more simpler. So let's say we have our 3x3 three three filter here inside of this input of 4x4. Four four. So that would give us 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. This is our starting location. That would be one. And to get the output, we would just count how many times we can move inside of this input. So since we're already here, we can only move one other time. That would give us two. This will be our new starting position. One, two, three. One, two, three. And this will be one here for top to bottom. And we only can move down once. Two. That would give us a two by two. I don't understand why we couldn't just do something simple like that. I mean, the formula looks pretty. And it looks pretty awesome, I guess. It makes me feel computer science-y. But yeah, it was that simple. You feel me? We have our filter here, one, two, three, by one, two, three. This is our starting location, and it starts at one. How many times can we move from the left to the right? We can move one additional time. One plus one is two. That gives us two. So this is our new starting location. One, two, three, by one, two, three. This is going to be one. How many times can we move down from our top location? Just one. Two. Two by two. Uh, like I said, yeah. So yeah, I did that this morning, and uh, I, I went through the process of going through all of that, taking notes and uh, figuring out this fancy formula when I already had the answer figured out myself. But yeah, like I said, it's always important to read the uh, source material and read the documentation, but it's also very, very important that you use your own brains and uh, implement your own strategies when doing this kind of work. I mean, it, it is good to get the answers from other people sometimes, but sometimes you can simplify things by making it best for your own understanding. Like I said, the way I came up with the solution is much more beneficial for me, but it might not work for everyone else, so yeah. But yeah, with that being said, we're gonna leave it there for today. And of course, we're gonna uh, pick it up tomorrow, and I will keep you guys posted every step of the way. But for now, this is the Python Poppy. You guys stay Gucci.